Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Socially Joe. I am Joe Riggio, and I am joined here by my friend Jennifer Gallagher. Uh, she and her husband are with Suncoast, or yeah, Suncoast Auto and Truck Repair in Palmetto. Mm -hmm. And she is, I'm going to give her a little bit of the mic here to introduce herself a little bit. And we're going to talk about the topic, their history and why they started Suncoast and Auto Truck Repair. So it's going to be kind of interesting how we're doing this. So welcome <laughs> once again to episode four. So Jennifer, I'm going to give it over to you. Oh, yay. Hi, everyone. Uh, Jennifer Gallagher here. I'm one of the owners of Suncoast Auto and Truck Repair. Uh, my husband and I uh, own this uh, repair shop. Um, so we're excited to be uh, here with you, Joe. Okay. That's awesome. So let, let's get into these questions now, Jen, shall we? We should. <laughs> so anyway, how long have you and Jason been doing automotive uh, repair? So we've been servicing the area for since 2008. So we've been doing it uh, for, yeah, so gosh, that's over, over 10, 12, my goodness, 12 years-ish ago? Yeah, something like that. That's crazy. So, um, you know, I know Jason's been working on this since he was about 12 years old. He's been doing automotive repair. He started out with uh, dirt bikes and self-taught himself how to do huh. automotive repair and then on up to our heavy-duty deal stuff over here, too. Nice. So, mm -hmm. um, with that, what are, what are the passions that both of you and Jason have while, um, you know, in the Suncoast, uh, auto truck repair, like what's the passion behind it? Um, so I know for Jason, he's, um, he's very detailed, so he's very thorough. So, um, his passion is figuring out what is going on with the vehicle, why it's doing uh, the symptoms that it's doing. Um, and he has a real knack for like piecing things together. Um, they actually call him the car doctor because he literally has like a, a <laughs> I guess what you call a mechanics uh, stethoscope. Like a, yeah, that's it. <laughs> like a doctor. And um, normally like if he can't, if the scanner isn't telling him what's going on, like he will stick the literally the stethoscope <laughs> down into the vehicle to listen. So it, he just has a real passion for it. He got it from his grandfather on his father's side. Um, and as long as I've been with him, which is over 20 years, everyone comes to him to, to fix their vehicles. I mean, he's even brought vehicles back from the dead. So it's crazy. My passion is. So not only is he a, yeah. an auto doctor, he's an auto, he's an auto necromancer. That's what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> something like that. Something like that. He's like a car whisperer as well. Like he's, he's a, He's a, he's definitely like the best master mechanic and I'm not just saying it because he's my husband and love of my life, but he really is a master mechanic, <laughs> um, uh, with, with it. Um, what and about your passion? My passion is entrepreneurship, making connections. Um, uh, you know, I came from a background where I was a native, I'm a native here to Bradenton and my family had a Chinese restaurant. So I kind of grew up in that environment. Um, and so I've got a knack for entrepreneurship and making connections with people and just making sure people are, are taken care of. Um, so I, you know, I just, I just love to meet people and make sure that their vehicles are taken care of and, um, you know, helping the business grow in, in every which way I can think possible. So I'm going to jump a little mm -hmm. ahead on the questions because you kind mm -hmm. of touched point on one of the questions anyway. Yep. As you said that you had an experience in entrepreneurship while working in your family's business. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you, um, in X amount of years ago, you had, you had the opportunity and you wanted to join Jason in this, uh, this his passion. So elaborate on that a little bit. Sure. So um, I first started working at my family's restaurant. As I said, I was like 11 and a half. They stuck me in the kitchen, uh, worked my way up to general manager, figured out that I did not want to live the rest of my life working the restaurant business. Um, and then I went and got a degree in computer graphic design. Um, and I was able to get a corporate job doing graphic design for actually Foot Locker and Champs um, for about 10 years. Um, and in 2013, I had the opportunity to leave my corporate job and, and join my husband. I, cause from 2008, when he started the business mm -hmm. to 2013, he was literally a one man band. He was by himself. Like he did everything, scheduling, 
repairs, ordering parts, bookkeeping, all that, you know, trying to collect money from customers. Um, and I could see that I had the opportunity to join him and to help him grow even more because he just kept growing every year. Like he started off just as a mobile mechanic. It was just him and his van, the tools that he had collected and the small clientele he had built from a local repair shop that he was working for. Mm -hmm. Um, and he started off that way and he just, for himself from 08 to 13, he just kept growing because he kept growing and having to go into bigger shops. Like we literally moved. He is, we've moved like four or five times. <laughs> and, and, and yeah. And only because like, we just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so in, in 13, like I literally saw him, like he was like struggling. He's like, I need help, you know? Um, so <laughs> So then that, that kicked back my, oh, you know, my entrepreneurship passion from working at the restaurant and dealing with customer service and, and, and running a business there. And I was like, oh, I could see it. So I, that's when I joined him in 2013. And so that's, from 13 to now. Yeah, that's great. Well, I have to say, yeah. I don't know about all the locations that you were at, but I remember yeah. <laughs> going to your grand opening to the latest one that you're up in Palmetto, yeah. yes. which is huge compared to the one that you used to have it off of 301, which yes. I have to admit, I did not know that your um, old auto mechanic um, service office was there. And I used to pass by it going to one of my jobs. I'm like, oh, I didn't even know you existed there because I yeah. didn't think about it until you told me. I was like, oh my God. But then yeah. you, it's from what I saw you had to that location off 301 to this one in Palmetto, you are way larger space scope and yes. everything like that. Yeah. Um, so uh, without giving any names or anything like that, I know you mentioned that um, Jason was with a local repair shop company, but um, mm -hmm. what what drove him from going from a local repair shop to owning his own business? Because obviously we're mm -hmm. all entrepreneurs and there comes that part mm -hmm. in life where you have to take that leap of faith and say, this mm -hmm. is for me or not for me. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So um, the later part of 07, when the economy kind of started getting all crazy and kind of basically tanked and, and was bad, it was very trying, the local repair shop could not afford to keep him on board anymore. Um, so they had to cut back. So basically they laid him off, unfortunately. Um, and when they laid him off, I mean, he understood. There was no hard feelings there. He understood what was going on. Um, you know, he, he tried to go apply at the dealerships, um, mm -hmm. but his heart was tugging at him and basically telling him, no, don't, don't do the dealership. You can do this. You can do this on your own. You can start your own business. And so he did, he took the leap in 2008. Um, I think in June, 2008, he took the leap and he decided to go out on his own. Okay. Well, so then he's, yeah. Yeah, but then let me ask you this. In mm -hmm. 2008, if he started his – if that's where he wanted to do his leap of business, it was only about a year. So that's really mm -hmm. good that he was able to figure that out. But mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit more of, like, what did he realize in to start bringing cars into the shop and doing the repairs himself with, you know, the high demand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, his clientele was, was getting bigger and bigger because it was all word of mouth. So from his original small clientele that he built from when he was at the, at the repair shop that he worked for, um, you know, he started going around to them because when he started this, he saw that there was a niche. There was not a mobile mechanic around at that time. Um, so he started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and then it came to a point where these, there's a lot of repairs that can't be done out in the field. Mm -hmm. for you know safety precautions and OSHA regions and all that stuff so and he was getting jobs in that were pretty big like engine swaps transmission service you know transmission swaps things of that nature that just can't be done in a customer's driveway um so therefore he had to start getting a shop so he started out small a little small shop um over there by Tropicana <laughs> nice so, so yeah you did, you did mention, and I just want to elaborate a little bit more. Um, tell us a little bit more about a mobile mechanic, because some of us, when we think of just mm -hmm. mechanics, we just think about, oh, you're going to a local garage. So elaborate mm -hmm. a little bit more on mobile mechanicry, because I'm sure there are some people that don't know that. Yeah, so let me just say real quick that we, we do not offer it anymore right now. 
Um, okay. But that is that is something that we are definitely thinking about on down the future. Um, but just at this moment, we had to stop. So mobile mechanic, it makes it very um, convenient for customer, right? Um, mm -hmm. You know, if they're at a job and they need to get an oil change done, you know, and they can't leave. I mean, for a mobile mechanic to come out there and, and do it for you right while you're working, um, that, that's great to do. You know, an oil change is something that he could do out in the field. Um, as long as he had the right containers to, to get the fluids and all that stuff, um, you know, uh, to house the fluid so he can properly dump it. Um, and, yeah. um, and so, you know, it, it's just a convenience, but along with convenience, you know, um, comes unfortunately the extra charge because not only are you having to pay for service rights, but you're also going to be paying for mileage if, you know, cause he would have to, go you know there was one time he was he had a customer out in upper manatee river road yep and that is far so and he had to come into town to like the parts places to get the parts that he needed and then go back out there um so that in a sense even though it's convenient you know if the customer is willing to, to to pay a little bit more than that you know i, I would say the mold mechanic wise is like is just a means of you not having to go and drop off at a shop or wait at a shop or go to a uh, a place that does oil changes and have to sit there and wait so you bring mm -hmm. up a very interesting point as well um mm -hmm. cuz i didn't think about it until you mentioned it during the mobile mechanicry is was there any extra charges or anything for disposing of all the um, oil and all that stuff because it was on a different site? Because obviously, if you're in a garage, mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. the pans, you have everything you need Correct. right there. But mm -hmm. right now, now you're telling me I'm like in someone's corporate parking lot and I got to raise a mm -hmm. car, I got to put a pan under there and all this other stuff. Was mm -hmm. there anything extra for that? Or um, when he was doing it, no, he did not charge. <laughs> <laughs> extra okay. for it it was all included in uh but the mobile mechanics of today probably would add that extra charge on there um okay. and then especially you know as well as charge for gas miles if they have to travel far or travel back and forth to get parts and all that stuff you know um so yeah so then he was like you know what i gotta stop this mobile um, cause number one they, like i said he was by himself so he really couldn't do that anymore number two he was getting bigger jobs that uh, he could not do out in the field because he really needed to have a car lift to lift the car up just easier for him. You know, yeah. it's kind of, kind of hard to like scoot yourself underneath a vehicle in a, in a parking lot. <laughs> you well, know, I, just I'm sure, to the <laughs> well, I was going to say, I'm, I'm sure he had some kind of lift, like, um, not a hydraulic, but you know, well, yeah, shift he, hydraulic thing to lift up a little bit. He did, but then there's the safety aspect of that too. So it's, it's a big li liability, you know, like, cause, because what if the, hydraulic portable jack like went bad you yeah. know or or just one of those like jack stands like that's just it's just not safe yep that brings up a lot of questions but that's mm -hmm. in a different topic yeah <laughs> <laughs> so but anyway um so what are some uh items people should be aware of in the auto mechanic industry and when i say that is um you know, there, there are a lot of different mechanics out there that mm -hmm. will like charge higher than others or, you know, do some swindling uh, mm -hmm. of sorts and all this other stuff. What are ways to protect yourself? Because obviously um, up north when I was in PA, I used to go to the dealership uh, for all my stuff. And then next thing you know, right. I, I found a reputable uh, garage person that basically he knew me, I knew him and he would let me do payment plans and all this other stuff. And he used to joke with me all the time and he got paid, he was happy and he kept getting my business and it was great. But coming down here, it's a new area. And now I had to, you know, yeah. put my fingers out there, find out networking and all this other stuff. And, I have found you and Jason. Yes. So therefore, now I work with you and Jason, but <laughs> mm -hmm. there are some things I still go to my dealership for, but I really rely on you and Jason for everything. So mm -hmm. kind of give us a little hint. Obviously, you know, um, no name bashing or anything like that. Just, <laughs> no. I, to, I just want to be aware that people know what to look for. Um, yeah. So obviously like if you go to a place and your gut feeling is telling you that they you don't get a good feeling from the place then you know you should definitely probably stay away from it but um i mean i would say like you got to do your research online 
research, look at the Google reviews, uh, look them up and see if they're accredited on the Better Business 